this video is going to be about transitional species and the argument that transitional species don't exist because everything we see in the fossil record is fully formed. This argument for me was hard to understand because I know that every living thing was is a transitional species. I didn't understand this argument until Am I Too Heavy For You left me a message and in part of that message it said that a transitional species species should look like houses halfway built. This argument comes from ignorance of evolution, natural selection, and mutations. They think that mutations will always be detrimental and never be advantageous to a species. This is untrue. Most mutations are neutral. The, the detrimental mutations will be weeded out by natural selection, and the beneficial mutations will be passed on in a higher rate to the generations to come. This argument is often complemented by a quote mine from Stephen Jay Gould about punctuated equilibrium. This also shows that they do not understand what punctuated equilibrium is about. This video is not about that. In this video, I shall show one example of gradual evolution in the genus Homo. The example I'm going to be using is the evolution from Homo erectus to Homo sapien. Postcranially, Homo erectus is very similar to a modern Homo sapien. Cranially, they are very different. Cranially, Homo erectus uh, has anywhere between a 750 to a 1,250 cc brain. Its skull is flattened on the top and has large brow ridges, the largest of any of the Homo species. It has robust jawline with larger teeth than any other homo species but smaller than most of the other hominids before it. Homo sapiens have a 1200 to 1700 cc brain. They have small to no brow ranges at all and their skull is short and not as projected as homo erectus. Their jaw is also small and has smaller teeth compared to any other hominid species. It also has a pronounced chin which is different from any other hominid species before it. Now as you can see there is many things that is different cranially from Homo sapien and Homo erectus. How do we reconcile these? Well in between Homo erectus and Homo sapien there's a species called Homo heidelbergensis. Homo heidelbergensis has a brain size that's anywhere between 1100 cc's to 1400 cc's. Its skull is higher than Homo erectus but not as high as modern Homo sapiens. Its face is less projected than Homo erectus but not as projected as Homo sapiens. It has similar teeth to Homo erectus, just not as, just a little bit smaller. One thing that shows that this is gradual evolution is it's hard to pinpoint the actual date that Homo heidelbergensis appeared and disappeared. The reason for this is because it's very hard to distinguish between late Homo erectus and early Homo heidelbergensis. They share a lot of the same features. It's also hard to determine between late Heidel Homo heidelbergensis and early Homo sapiens because their features seem to blend into one another. As you can see from this example, the fully formed argument is nonsense. All three of these species are fully formed. The only difference is the buildup of traits that determines what species they're categorized into.